Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Leonardo 1 6 scale collectible figure from Mondo. That's right, the Mondo Turtles are finally starting to arrive, starting with the very first one being Leonardo. I pre-ordered this figure so long ago, and after a long delay, the figures are finally starting to ship, and I am so excited to check this guy out, so let's dive right in and do it. As you can see, he comes in a really nice large-scale box that's got a nice blue background to reflect the signature color of Leonardo's bandana. We got some really cool artwork right there on the front. Has a very cool kind of classic comic booky look to it, which I really, really like. Almost has that dark kind of gritty tone. I also do have the Mondo exclusive, so we've got the nice little kind of foil sticker right there on the front letting me know that that is the version that I have. And as we rotate the box around to the back side, we have this beautiful full color artwork featuring all four of the turtles kind of diving into battle, all sporting the classic red bandanas, which I love. So really beautiful box here. Now what's also great is we do have a Velcro flap on the front, so we can open that up to reveal our figure within. On the left side of the flap, we've got some really nice kind of uh, concept artwork of the action figure itself. While on the right hand side, we've got the window box that fully showcases our figure within. You can clearly see the two different heads, one with the blue and one with the red bandana. And we've got some really great accessories packed in there with him as well. So let's go ahead and open this guy out of the box and take a closer look at him. All right, so Leonardo is outside of the box. Let's take a closer look at him. Let's start by looking at the scale here. If I bring the tape measure in, you can see that Leonardo stands just shy of 10 inches tall. And he's a very chunky, very large action figure. He feels nice and sturdy. He's plastic all the way through. So really, he feels like just a big action figure. And I gotta say, he feels really nice. And before we get into anything else, I wanna focus solely on the look of the figure because I really do like the sculpt and the paint deco on this guy. Mondo did a really good job of making a version of Leonardo that's kind of their own version that really looks like a nice cross between the old Mirage comics and kind of that cartoon or vintage action figure style that we all know and love. So he does have a very comic booky look, but as you can see, he comes out of the box with that sweet blue bandana on, which is kind of what we saw with the old toys and all the cartoon series since. Now he does come with that alternate head that's got the red bandana bandana and I think that looks equally as awesome. Um, it's very easy to pop that off so let me go ahead and show you that first of all. The blue head seems to pop right off of the ball joint very easily. In fact I was kind of um, surprised by how easy it is to pull it off. It doesn't really clip on there very tight. You can see it just kind of falls off. Now it's not loose by any means. You can see it's not like his head's bobbling or anything like that so I think that's totally fine. However, on the flip side, uh, the alternate head is very, very tight. It's almost like the hole is a little too small. Now, it might just need to be worked out, but I've swapped the head off a few times now to take photos, and it's very hard still to put on all the way. So, very, very tight fit, and even after you get it on, it is really hard to articulate this particular head around. So, it might just take a little bit of work to kind of make it a little more loose to fit on that ball joint. But I will say, I love the look of this figure with that red bandana. In fact, I think this might be how I display all my Mondo Turtles with that red bandana. But I love that we've got the option for both because I know there's a lot of fans out there who will also want the blue bandana and I do think the head sculpt looks great on both of them. I do really like the paint deco as well. I think it's got a nice amount of shading in there. The colors look really good all throughout the figure. And there's a lot of great little sculpting details like all the nicks and scratches seen like on the front of the shell there and even around on the back of the shell. Uh, yeah, the pads and everything look great on the elbows and the knees. So all in all, I love the, uh, the sculpt, the design, love kind of that stocky build of the figure. He's definitely going to make for a beautiful display piece. Now, before we move along to articulation and accessories, there are a few complaints I have with this guy that I want to point out first. Let's start right here. Mine, unfortunately, came out of the box broken. 
and I've already seen several people reporting some QC issues. I was a little bummed that I experienced some of those quality control issues myself. Uh, this guy came out of the box like this. When I opened the box, this is how he was sitting in there. So somehow it broke when he was being packaged or in transit. Um, but you can see that the belt just kind of snapped, like right on the straps there, just snapped and came unglued from his back. Um, and as a result, the little scabbards kind of slide right off the back of the belt. I wonder if this is because they, there's not really a lot of space that was kind of made for the scabbards. As you can see, like when it's glued on, they just kind of rest up against his back. Um, so I don't know if there's just not enough space, but it also feels just a little brittle. Like this material is a bit of a brittle plastic and especially the scabbards, they feel um, really kind of fragile, honestly. So I was really bummed to find this broken right out of the box. Uh, this is something of course that I could probably just glue and I wouldn't notice too much, but it's always a bummer when you first open a toy and it comes out of the package broken right away. So that was my biggest issue. Uh, the other things are just kind of minor. I kind of talked about how tight the head is to put on with the, the red bandana, which isn't so bad. Uh, but the art, rest of the articulation is kind of a weird mixed bag. Um, some of the joints are loose and some of the joints are tight um, and like specifically with the arm You can see how loose the arm is it kind of just dangles here, especially on the left arm um, You know the right arm is a lot tighter So the left arm is just really loose it kind of it's kind of floppy there And I really don't like that. I kind of got the same thing with the thighs. They're very loose So when I stand them at times I kind of have to adjust them to keep them from falling over so uh, just some weird stuff going on there as well But let's go ahead and talk about the articulation with this guy because I do think he's got a pretty great range of motion. So I already showed you that the head's on a ball joint. You can twist that all the way around for a good range of motion. I also really like that they articulated the little bandana piece in the back. So you can kind of spin that around and pose it in different ways to make it look like it's windswept or just hanging down. That's pretty cool. He's got ball joints at the shoulders, so the arms can go outwards, forwards, and backwards. Those are pretty tight on my figure. Uh, then he's got articulation at the top of the biceps, as well as uh, swivels at the elbows there, where he also has the standard joints for the elbows. And those are really tight moving forwards and backwards. They are a bit loose moving side to side. So, um, <laughs> and that was going to bring me to the next thing I was going to show you guys. Did you notice how the right arm just popped right out of socket? That keeps happening with me on this one. The left arm doesn't seem to do that, but the right arm just keeps falling right out of socket. And I especially have that problem when I'm trying to do the interchangeable hands because he does have different hands that we can swap on and off, which I'll show you in just a bit. Now it stays on there fine, but it seems like every time I'm posing the guy around, it just pops right out of socket. So I don't really know if that's by design or not, but like I said, this one over here seems solid. This one pops out pretty easy. So otherwise, we've got swivels at the wrists. We also have hinge joints at the wrist, which I really like there. It doesn't appear that we've really got anything in the torso, uh, which happens a lot with turtles because of the shells there. Then we've got those ball joints at the thighs, so the legs can go outwards. They can move the legs forwards and backwards. You can swivel them up there at the thighs. you got nice double joints at the knees, which I like there, kind of behind uh, the knee pads. And then the ankles have the ability to kind of rock side to side, which is always very nice, as well as slightly move forwards and backwards. So really, you can get some pretty neat poses out of this guy you can get some nice kind of wide stances and everything um, so I do like that I just wish uh, that there was more of a balance here because some of those joints are really tight some of them are so tight like that red bandana head that it's hard to move it but then you got other joints that are so loose that they almost flop around or pop right out of socket so uh, just a few things I would really like to see kind of tightened up on this guy all right, let's go and talk about accessories because one thing is really cool about this guy is he has a ton of accessories. Uh, first up, let's just bring in his standard katana blades. Of course, the weapons of Leonardo. You would definitely expect him to come with these. They are very nicely painted where the blades have a nice metallic silver on there. They've got the red handles, nice gold trim on there. Uh, one thing I want to point out because I noticed that as soon as I pulled them out, they are made of that same kind of brittle plastic that I pointed out with the scabbards. And it makes me a little nervous because they're so thin, I worry about breaking them, especially when I'm putting them in his gripping hands. Uh, the fingers are really tight on this guy and they don't have a lot of give. Now I will say, the more that I've kind of put the uh, swords in his hands, the more worked out it's gotten. So it's definitely gotten better. It's not that uh, bad. I would just suggest being really careful the first couple times you put the swords in his hand. Here, you can see like this, trying to get it kind of positioned in there. because. 
because um, you don't want to accidentally like snap the blades. But otherwise, looks pretty cool. Once you get those in his hands, he's got a really tight grip on them, which is appreciated. I do really like that. And now we can get them posed with his katana swords, which does look very cool. I like the size of them. I think they work perfect with the figure there. And of course, you can slide those in the scabbards on his back to store them there as well. So I briefly mentioned also that he comes with a few interchangeable hands. So I'll show you guys that real quick. Uh, first of all, uh, along with the gripping hands, he comes with two open hands that have the little uh, claws on there for climbing walls, which is very, very cool. And we can easily change out the hands just by giving a nice tug at the wrist. You kind of got to twist and tug a little bit there, pops it right out of socket. You can see it's just a little peg there that will pull the hands right out of socket. And in its place, you can pop the new hands in. So that way, if you want to switch things up, you can pose him uh, uh, with those cool little gripping hands there for scaling walls or uh, exclusive with the Leonardo figure we get this right hand that has a pointing finger so Leonardo can lead his team into victory I actually really like that pointing hand I think that is really really cool Next up for accessories, he's got a lot of other fun things going on here. He comes with four different ninja stars. So he's got like a two of the four-point shurikens and two of the eight-point shurikens. And he actually can hold these pretty well. Uh, those gripping hands, like the fingers are close together enough that he can grip onto those pretty good. So those are pretty sweet. He comes with a grappling hook, which I really like. Great metallic silver, just like the swords. And it has a real rope on there, uh, which is really nice. So that's a fun accessory to pose him with as well. And then we get into some of the really, really fun accessories. He has an Utrom Blaster, which is awesome. Um, some of these accessories, of course, come straight out of the Mirage comic books, which is so cool. So I really like this Mir uh, Mirage-style Utrom Blaster. I think that's a really fun accessory. Gives you something a little unique to pose with your Leonardo that we don't typically see. Uh, then we also get unmutated versions of both Leonardo as a baby turtle and Master Splinter as a baby rat. So these are just solid figures or um, non-articulated so they don't pose, but they're wonderfully painted. And I just love getting little buddy kind of toys like this, little buddy figures. Uh, these, are, these will just make great little pieces to display on the shelf. And then the thing that makes this version the exclusive version, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, he comes with uh, the damaged uh, arm spikes or the uh, the little uh, armor piece for Master Shredder. Uh, this, of course, comes straight out of the first issue of the Mirage comics there. Very cool little accessory. It's nicely detailed, uh, and it's really, really cool, especially for fans of the original Mirage comics. So I thought that was really cool. So this one only comes with that exclusive version of Leo, which, of course, is the one that sold out right away. So this is the, uh, the going to be the harder to get piece from this assortment. All right, guys, it's comparison time. Just for fun, I'm standing Leonardo alongside just a collection of different Leonardo figures here, which will give you a good idea of the scale and the cool uh, sculpting when compared to some of those other figures that have been released over the years. And it's pretty cool just putting them with like a whole group of different Leonardo figures so you can really see all the different styles that we're now getting in action figure form. Something that I really, really appreciate. So there you guys go. There is a look at the brand new Mondo Leonardo action figure. So overall, I like this guy. I think he looks really nice. I absolutely love the design. The design is why I wanted to buy these in the first place. I love that kind of comic booky look, and I thought it was something that would just look really, really great displayed on the shelf. Plus, they're a little unique since they're in that larger scale, and the accessories are definitely top notch. Now, that's not to say that I don't have some issues with this guy. Uh, all the things that I pointed out earlier, the articulation being just a little bit loose, uh, the really, really tight joint on that red bandana head, uh, the bit of a brittle plastic scene on the katana blades, and especially that broken belt strap. Those are all letdowns, and I think the reason that they bother me so much is because this is a very expensive figure. He was $150, and it took a year for him to arrive. I pre-ordered him about a year ago. So the fact that I waited so long and paid so much and then opened him up and found a broken belt was highly disappointing. 
and I, like I said, I've seen people online kind of posting some of their own quality control issues, and I know that Mondo is kind of new to the action figure game, so I really hope this is something that they can kind of work out as we go on. Maybe we won't have those issues with the other turtles, because I gotta tell you that I really like the designs here, and I think that we've really kind of got the start of a great line of figures. So, very expensive. If you've got the money for him, he's gonna run you about $150. He's already sold out on Mondo's website, but at this point you can pick him up still at some other online stores like BigBadToyStore.com. So happy hunting, my friends. And hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor, hit that like button and leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you picked him up or you had any issues with yours. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on one of my toy reviews. Until next time, my friends.